Hello everybody, the new players are out in force today, and on that note, we're going to talk about 12 things that you need to know as a new player. Now, I, <laughs> it's not 12 things I wish I'd knew as a new player, because some of these actually were added when I wasn't a new player, some of these are new game features, so just keep that in mind, I like the title. Um, so first off, you're going to want to join the Northwind Discord server, this, this server is just imperative to gameplay. Um, there's a Q&A channel for all new players if you have questions. There's the market channel where you, well, it basically facilitates the entire player economy. That's where you list things you want, that's where you find things you're trying to purchase, etc. Um, and then there's the announcements channel uh, and all the teasers channels. Not teasers, sorry. Uh, what are they called? Um, it's the channels where they announce updates and stuff. The, they, they show patch notes and stuff. And that's very useful for figuring out what's in every new update. So second off, right, lead balls. Now this is probably the question I get most. Like this is the question everyone and their brother likes asking me in the comments section. So to get lead balls, you need to go and either craft yourself a lead ball mold uh, at any anvil. You can do it at adept smithing, I think, with two steel ingots and then one cosmetic ingot if you want to make a different color. Or you can do the easy route, which is go to Rupert, uh, get 25 pounds roughly, Exit the uh, the front of the Rupert, uh, the uh, JB safe zone, right? Go out the front area into Plains of Abraham. Um, go around uh, Bear's Mark, go around Cliffs of Fowl. I'll put a map up. Uh, go around those two until you get to this little archipelago area. Go along that. Enter the cave on the uh, opposite side of the archipelago. Um, go through the middle passage in the caves, and that's the Den Cave. So you go in there, and then you purchase your lead ball mold for, I think it's 2250 uh, I'd bring 25, just in case. But once you have your lead ball mold, you can actually craft lead balls. So to do that, you'll need a pickaxe, so you just go and mine lead ore wherever you want to mine it. They're all over the place. Get your lead ore, and then go chop down a tree, and then build a campfire. So this is your campfire in the campfire, uh, the uh, crafting menu. Then you build your campfire, right? Then you equip your lead ball mold, and then you hold F next to the campfire with this thing in your hand. And that's how you make lead balls. It's kind of a complicated process. I don't blame people for not knowing it. So third, steel. Now, to get steel, you go to Thorns Camp on Cantermain. There's a ton of steel, or, sorry, there's a ton of uh, coal deposits in there. And there's also iron deposits. So you mine the coal, you mine the iron. And that's how you make steel at one of those, uh, what are they called? Um, smelting furnaces. So yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. God, people love getting in the shot, don't they? This is like the eighth time this happened today. So fourth off, uh, the crafting menu with C. All colonists have a crafting menu. Uh, and any time you need to make a weapon, like let's say you've been dried on X or Y island, etc. And you need some cheap alternatives to regular metal colonist weapons. The stone hatchet, and where's the stone spear? The stone hatchet and the stone spear are great, great little alternatives. They're not as high damaging as their colonist counterparts, right? Like, they don't do as much as tomahawks and uh, pikes do, but they're not bad. They're, they're good little weapons, and they're very, very fast. And they can both be thrown, which is also very handy. Now, I don't recommend bows for combat, but you can craft bows here. You can also craft bandages. So if you ever need anything in a pinch, C is the menu I recommend you open. All right, next up is insurance. Uh, insurance is crazy, crazy useful. Once you have a stable source of income, I recommend you go for insurance. Now, how to insure a gun, you run over here uh, to any bank on any island. You run into a bank, talk to, make sure you got the pounds in your inventory. Um, I want to register a weapon for insurance. Press that, get through all these, and here's your insurance screen, all right? So you just hold insure, which is E. Currently, I have this gun insured, so I can't do it, but Hold E on this to insure, then you'll get a little menu down here, you select how many days you want to insure it, and for that amount of time, your gun cannot be looted. Uh, and that's what this little bar here is. This, um, this blue bar, that represents the days you have insured. It can go for a max of seven days, so right now my Tana has six days, pretty much. And that's what that bar represents. So, if you're going on an island where you can be looted, make sure to insure your primary. It's very, very important to do that. So sixth, hauling contracts. If you're a new player and you need money, your best bet is probably hauling contracts. 
if not the earlier tiered contracts. Now, hauling contracts are pretty simple. You walk into any store, um, well, sorry, any store that's uh, like a profession store, so that's, you know, hunting, woodworking, smithing, leatherworking, etc. Right, so you hit, do you have any work for me? You could do these. And then the blue contracts are the hauling contracts. So you take the contract, and then you go down to any dock on any island, and you purchase the crate. I don't actually have pounds, so I can't purchase a crate. But you see that crate there just got spawned in. You can even see, it says right here, purchase the crate. So if I had five pounds on me, I'd go buy that crate. I'd bring that crate up here. I'd bring the crate over. I'd go into the store. I'd drop the crate right around it, in this area, in this vicinity. I'd re-enter the menu, and then hold E to turn in the crate. Uh, and that is the easiest way to make money by far. You don't make a lot of money, but that is a way to make money. And a lot of new players do that starting out. So if you need money, that's what I'd recommend you do. So seventh, looting players. Um, you won't ever get a bounty if you kill someone. The only time you get a bounty from a player is if you loot them. And this only happens on HBC and, uh, well, SLC now, and colonists. So if you loot a SLC member... Or if you loot a colonist, that's when you get a bounty. You'll never get a bounty from looting a native. Uh, now, if you get a bounty, you have 20 minutes where you've got this bounty status. Now, anyone, if they look at a bounty board, they can see that. They can see the little uh, bounty. They can see where you are in the map. They can see your name, your outfit, etc. So I don't recommend looting someone on an island with lootable stuff, you know, enabled. I don't recommend looting someone unless you're prepared to fight, because you, you've got another 20 minutes, essentially, uh, where your location is basically broadcast to anyone who has your bounty. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then also, if you have a bounty, you can be killed in Save Zone. You can't be looted in Save Zone, but you can be killed in Save Zone. So that will happen, and that will actually put you in combat. There are people who've combat logged because they've killed bounties in Save Zone, and they're in combat, but they don't remember. Uh, I've actually done that a couple times. So just keep that in mind. You'll be put in combat if you're fighting in Save Zone with a bounty. So, eighth, acquiring rare pelts. Um, now, a lot of new players see that uh, white and black pelts are like this crazy cool rare item early on in game. You know, they're like, "Oh my god!" Like, I want, I want a white and black pelt. You know, because that's one of the new. That's one of the first things they realize is a rare item in the game because they can all see it through the profession menu. And so, a lot of players devote a lot of time to getting these white and black pelts in game. They they try to go hunting. They try to find them. Uh, and so my advice to you is do not do this. If you want a white or a black pelt, or the clothing item that white or black pelt will be made into, what you should do is buy it in the market channel, okay? Don't try and get it yourself in-game, okay? Don't play with RNGs like that. It's just, it's not gonna work. It's like the people who go gem mining. Like, just don't do it. Don't do it. There are much easier ways to acquire these things. If you want gems, get the money, buy it on the market. If you want these pelts, get the money, buy it in the market. That's what I recommend you do. So now ninth, Master Smithing. It's very important as a new player, you get Master Smithing. Uh, it's a lot harder with this update, don't get me wrong. It is much harder to do, but it's still crazy, crazy, crazy important that you do it. It's the most important skill, hands down. The other ones are cool, but Master Smithing is basically essential. So if you're going to prioritize any skill, prioritize Master Smithing. Tenth, we're going to talk about gun durability. So, uh, every gun has about 100 shots before its durability is completely over. As you see, this one's at 93%, this one's at 89%. I fired 11 shots with my Tane, and then 7 shots with my Holstein. So, <laughs> this slowly depletes every time you fire. Um, now, there are three little levels here. There's this green level, and then a yellow level, and then a red level. The green level uh, performance isn't impacted at all. When it hits the yellow level, you're less accurate and you do less damage with every gun. And then when you hit the red level, you're even less accurate and you do even less damage than the yellow level. Um, and this can be repaired if you go to a smithing store. We'll go to one right now. And you can just straight up go to the smithing guy and you can um, uh, hold down, I believe, E on the gun and he'll repair it for 20 pounds. Whoops. Uh, wait, no, it's the top menu. So, like, if I had 20 pounds on me, I could hold... Oh, it's R, not E. Sorry. Hold R to repair the gun. 
Wait, what? Oh, I see. It did it even though I didn't have pounds. Although it didn't repair the gun, it just bugged. Whatever. That's just a bug. Ignore that. Uh, so anyways, yeah, you go up, you hold R, and that repairs the gun. Alternatively, you can buy gun oil to repair it on the fly. Uh, and that's down here. Oh, it used to be 45 pounds, but now it's only 10. You just buy that, you repair your gun, you're good to go. That's actually cheaper now than uh, just doing it with a, the uh, NPC. So yeah, I recommend buying gun oil if you want to repair your gun, and that's that's how that's done. 10, uh, we're going to talk about crouching. Crouching will actually, it's very useful, and it will increase your accuracy by a significant margin. So as you see here, this is the size of my aiming reticle. My crosshair is this size. If I crouch, it becomes smaller. So this is very big. A lot of players crouch when they're hard scoping. It's very important you do this if you want an accurate shot. It's also much easier to land your shots when you crouch like this. Um, you don't actually get even more accuracy when you're prone. I thought this is how it worked at first, but if you're crouching or if you're prone, you get the same accuracy boost. So it doesn't really matter if you hold down like that. So just food for thought. Prone is not actually as useful as I assumed it would be when it was added to this update. All it does is like hide your profile, I guess you could say. So then, 12th and finally, we're going to talk about superior knives. Uh, once you have smithing mastered, the next thing I recommend you go for is a superior knife, okay? Try your hardest to get a hold of one of these, because these knives are like the regular knives, only they can't be looted. I've got, I've got a kukri, which is not a superior knife, um, but it's kind of similar, it's also not lootable. Uh, don't really focus on getting a kukri now, they're pretty rare. But um, superior knives are definitely what I'd recommend going for, because it's basically just a regular stone knife, uh, or hunting knife, if you're a Kalo, um, that can't be looted. It's just that, but better. Uh, and you can damage players with it, you can swing at them, um, and you can skin animals faster, which is also very helpful. So definitely go for a superior knife once you've got your bearing on the game. And yeah, that's all I really have to suggest. Those are the 12 things I recommend every new player know. This is very important. Thank you for sitting and listening through everything. And more content from me in the future.